Helios 522 do you read? Despite multiple radio calls, air traffic control at Athens received no response from Helios Flight 522. Two F-16 fighter jets from the Hellenic Air Force were scrambled to intercept the plane. The Boeing 737 carrying 121 people was on the verge of being shot down. While one of the two fighter pilots was waiting for firing permission, the other fighter pilot flew beside the 737 to assess the situation. Radio reports from the fighter pilot were shocking. Passengers were found unconscious in their seats and with the oxygen masks donned. In the cockpit, the co-pilot was slumped motionlessly at the controls with the captain out of sight. All of a sudden, a man appeared in the cockpit and was trying to regain control of the aircraft. Who was this mysterious man? Why were the remaining passengers and aircrew unconscious? This incident is considered one of the most unusual and shocking aviation accidents of the 21st century. Hello, welcome to Mike Files, a channel where we look into mysteries, incidents, and crimes. Without further ado, let's dive into today's story. Helios Airways was a low-cost Cypriot airline that flew between Cyprus and several European and African locations on both scheduled and charter flights. Its corporate offices were located on the grounds of Larnaca International Airport and this airport served as its primary base. The aircraft involved in this accident was a Boeing 737-300 which was first flown in 1997. Flight 522 was scheduled to leave Larnaca at 9 a.m. and its destination was Prague-Ruzine International Airport, with a stop off at Athens International Airport, where it was due to arrive at 10.45 a.m. The captain of the flight was Hans-Jürgen Merden, a 58-year-old German contract pilot recruited by Helios for holiday flights. He was a 35-year veteran of the skies. He had accumulated a total of 16,900 flight hours, including 5,500 hours on the Boeing 737. The first officer was Pampos Char Lambos, a 51-year-old Cypriot pilot, had flown with the company for the past five years. He had accumulated 7,549 flight hours in total, of which 3,991 were on the Boeing 737. Flight 522 departed Larnaca International Airport at 7 minutes past 9 in the morning for Athens International Airport, the stopover before flying to its final destination Prague-Ruzine International Airport. Upon taking off, the plane requested to climb to an altitude of 34,000 feet. Five minutes into the flight, the plane was still climbing and passing through 12,040 feet when a system warning started to sound. The pilots interpreted it as the takeoff configuration warning. They were confused as the takeoff configuration warning only sound on the ground, which signals that the plane was not ready for takeoff. The captain radioed Helios Operations Center. Operation, this is flight 522. We have a takeoff config warning. Please advise. Few minutes after the first warning, the master caution light started to illuminate due to the equipment pulling warning lights. While the pilots and the ground engineers were trying to troubleshoot the two alarms, the oxygen masks in the passenger cabin were deployed. At that moment, no one in the passenger cabin knew what the problem was. The passengers were still waiting for information from the cockpit. The pilots were unaware of the dropping of the oxygen masks in the cabin. They were still trying to troubleshoot the problems. The captain kept repeating that the cooling ventilation fan lights were off. The engineer subsequently asked the pilots to confirm that the pressurization panel was set to auto. The captain, however, responded to the engineer with another question, asking for the location of the equipment cooling circuit breakers. This was the last communication with the plane. Athens ATC, this is Nicosia ATC. We have a loss of radio communication plane. Helios 522. It is at the FIR boundary. Request to notify us if the plane contacts Athens. For over an hour, Athens ATC tried to establish contact with the aircraft, but received no response. 
By 10.54 a.m., the aircraft had been in a holding pattern for over 10 minutes. Athens ATC Alerted Rescue Coordination Center The Hellenic Air Force scrambled to F-16 to intercept the aircraft. The fighter pilots updated the situation that the passengers were passed out at their seats with the deployed oxygen masks worn. There was an unresponsive pilot in the cockpit as he slumped over the control column. A man appeared in the cockpit, and it seemed that he was trying to regain control of the aircraft. The man appeared to acknowledge the presence of the F-16s and he made a hand motion. The F-16 pilot responded with a hand signal for the man to follow him towards the airport. Within the next 10 minutes, both engines of Flight 522 stop working due to fuel depletion. At 12.04 p.m., Flight 522 crashed into the mountains near Grammatico, Greece. Fire and rescue workers rushed to the crash site. There were no survivors. The flight data recorder was found on the day of the accident whereas the cockpit voice recorder was found several days later. From the audio recording, five separate Mayday calls were heard, even though none of them had reached the air traffic controller. This voice was confirmed to be a flight attendant, as recognized by his colleagues. Moreover, investigators found tissue samples from the remains in the cockpit which belongs to this flight attendant. It was confirmed that the flight attendant was Andreas Perdomo, the person at the control when it crashed. In fact, Perdomo had his commercial pilot license. It was his first step towards his goal of becoming a captain for Helios. Unfortunately, all of his training wouldn't have helped to save the plane. When he was seen at the control, Flight 522 had been in the air for almost three hours. The ultimate reason for the crash was simple, Flight 522 had run out of fuel. Scheduled as a 90 minutes flight, the plane didn't have enough fuel to stay in the air for over three hours. The investigators also uncovered a suspicious history of maintenance issues with Flight 522. When the aircraft arrived from London earlier that morning, the previous flight crew had reported a frozen door seal and abnormal noises coming from the right aft service door. They requested a full inspection of the door. The inspection was carried out by a ground engineer, who then performed a pressurization leak check. To carry out this check without requiring the aircraft engines, the pressurization system was set to manual. However, the engineer failed to reset it to auto on completion of the test. This setting was confirmed after the pressurization panel containing the pressurization switch was retrieved from the crash site. After the aircraft was returned into service, the flight crew overlooked the pressurization system state on three occasions. During the pre-flight procedure, the after-start check, and the after-takeoff check. When the aircraft climbed through 12,040 feet, the cabin altitude warning sounded. It indicated that the aircraft wasn't pressurized at that altitude. This warning sound was identical to the takeoff configuration warning which had misled the pilots. At this juncture, had the pilots switched the pressurization switch from manual to auto or decided not to continue climbing, Flight 522 could have been saved. Unlike the cabin, automatically deployed oxygen masks are not equipped on commercial plane cockpits. The equipment cooling warning lights were also caused by the unpressurized condition of the cabin at high altitudes. One of the burning questions was, how did Pedromo manage to remain conscious almost after three hours? When the cabin masks were deployed, Pedromo was at the back of the plane. It was postulated that Pedromo could have used the extra passenger's masks while he moved towards the cabin, a process cabin crew call monkey swinging. In addition, he had used three of the four portable oxygen bottles to remain conscious throughout. Investigators concluded that Pedromo's experience was insufficient for him to gain control of the aircraft under the circumstances. However, 
Prodromo succeeded in banking the plane away from Athens, and towards a rural area as the engines flamed out. The crash of Helios 522 was the deadliest aviation accident, in the history of Greece. 